culture is The 49ers have a few good problems to have. They have a young core, they have exciting talent, and a skill surplus of positions that the league needs. Even then, you know that San Fran's not going to rest on their laurels. They're going to try everything they can to bring a Lombardi to Santa Clara. Why not Trevarius Ward? The Niners do need help at corner, and Ward is pretty good, so definitely worth the price of admission. But what about Jimmy G? We were told that there would be plenty of suitors pining for his services in the offseason, and he'd fetch a decent return. Only problem is that he's still here. Once again, not exactly a bad problem to have, but now we'll be forced to suffer through the endless hot takes of if Trey Lance is a bust because a quarterback now has to be good right off the bat. Fuck development, I want a franchise QB now! ESPN really has done horrible things to sports discourse. When I hear about Trey Lance, there are two sides of the spectrum. First is that Lance just needs time to develop his craft to reach his potential. The other is that Trey is apparently the worst quarterback to have ever quarterbacked. It's hard to get a read on him, but you have to remember it's only his second year of play and he's only played in a handful of NFL games. It took Debo Samuel a bit before he became what he is and look at him now. He got what he desired in the end. The big bucks. When you have the weapons they have on offense adding Javarius Ward to the defense, this is the year where the Niners need to take that next step. They've gotten very close to it, but they're missing that last piece to get them over the top. Kyle Shanahan and company feel the time is now. The Niners are going full bore with Trey Lance. It's not like San Francisco is a choice of QB either. Jimmy Garoppolo should have packed his bags a while ago. You mean to tell me that Jimmy's still a Niner? Well, this is quite awkward, isn't it? It's not a real bad problem to have, at least if Lance is bad out of the gate, San Fran is a backup option? Even with the teams that are choosing to blow it up and start from scratch, there is still plenty of intrigue with the NFC. So many teams desperate to win a championship or go far into January and even more trying to make a name for themselves. The NFC East hasn't had a repeat champion in years, so I'm going to maintain that narrative and pick Philly to win it. The NFC North is still Green Bay's to lose, but they're slowly losing grip on their stronghold. The NFC South has a few suitors, but the Bucks are still too loaded to really fail unless they get injured to hell and back. The NFC West? Huge question mark, but I think the Rams are still the team to beat. But what about the wild cards? It's tough to choose, there are so many good options here. In this case, I'm choosing the Niners, Saints, and Vikings. Yes, the Vikings. I think people are sleeping on them. Then again, we've said this about them before, only for them to fall apart. Sorry about that, Minnesota. It's not NFL football without an extremely inconceivable weather phenomenon wreaking havoc. In an effort to get the Bears to agree to a dome, a downpour as relentless as Lori Lightfoot's reign of terror pelted the field of play. Three plus inches of rain plus new sod featuring two young unproven quarterbacks. What that equals? A relentless battle of mid. The Niners Cavalry was stuck in mud all game and it neutralized the field of play for Chicago. Being forced to pass San Fran either didn't trust Trey Lance or the conditions were too fucked to do anything besides throw like shit. This was the chance for the Bears to strike. Thanks to the Niners taking a shitload of penalties and lapses in defensive coverage, Chicago wins a game sloppier than the field of play. With this on the docket before the game. Nobody knows, but now Bears fans can say Justin Fields is developing because of three passes. Considering their reputation with QBs, I'd honestly take it. You didn't expect Seattle to pull off more bullshit this week, did you? They were riding a shit ton of emotion and had a hackett handicap to aid them before. This time around, we slowly realized we all thought who we thought they were. San Francisco, being able to play on a field that wasn't a complete swamp, suffocated their longtime foe. They beat them in the air. They crushed them in the trenches. And simply lied in wait for the Seahawks to make careless errors with the ball. Smooth sailing. Nothing else happened of note. I would not look into the injury news anytime soon, Niners. That quarterback has simply never existed. Your quarterback has always been Jimmy G. It will continue to be Jimmy G. Trey Lance was simply a bad dream you had. Move on to next week. This was a game. It's the only thing I can say with certainty. When you cross a self-described offensive genius and a coach who's so inept at game management he has to hire outside help to make sure he doesn't fuck it up, you get an absolute affront to anything resembling offense. 
There are coaches from the 1970s face palming in disgust over what they're seeing in this contest. USFL matches showcased more competence in this regard than seen here. Sunday night football turned into a Benny Hill sketch. Missed passes, drops galore, fumbles, three and outs, and the occasional outstanding defensive play. Both of these teams can at least offer that. Denver's is the only reason why they're not staring down the barrel of 0-3. Perhaps Jimmy G will save us all from this horror. Second and 10 from his own end zone. Oh, wow. oh, the end of the end zone. It's a safety. Jimmy Jesus rose on the third day to simply commit an Orlovsky. Stepped out of the end zone for a safety, almost doubling Denver's point total. However, great fears must eventually be realized. San Francisco actually managed to kick a field goal to go up by five. After more terrible offense and Russell Wilson hearkening back to the days of bailing out the incompetence of everyone around him, Denver must overcome their boogeyman, scoring a touchdown in the red zone. Their greatest phobia must be conquered. Extra offensive line. Wilson gets Gordon touchdown, Denver! Oh my god, Denver, you did it! You scored a touchdown in the red zone! This is the most glorious miracle your franchise has ever received. Another ridiculously ugly win to bring Denver to a tie for the division lead. Defense led the day for you, Broncos. You may not have gotten Aaron Rodgers from the Packers, but you got the Mike McCarthy spirit from them. You know damn well what I mean by that. It's not an NFL season without those boys from the Bay Area showing up to LA and smacking them around for rent money. What they owe is roughly what the Niners are paying Debo Samuel this season. His in-game electricity could single-handedly stop the rolling blackouts in California. And whatever they're paying him still isn't near market value. The same goes for the Niners' defense. Matthew Stafford is having flashbacks to his days in Detroit. His offensive line is a hot mess. San Fran's might chased him all game, sacked him seven times, and destroyed any hope their opposition had when they were in the red zone. The score does not do it justice. This was domination. It marks the seventh straight time that the Niners have bested the Rams in regular season play. Now only if they maintain that narrative when it actually mattered last January. San Francisco, step right up and receive your free win. With the way Carolina has taken a hatchet to their legs to try and save them from walking, you'd have to be absolute failures to lose here. Considering how Charlotte is supporting this shit stain, it's Stefcon Zero. Stadium's a third full and about three quarters of those in attendance are Niners fans. The Panthers are lucky a college will try to buy Matt Rule on SeatGeek for about three bucks in transaction fees. That school will still be getting ripped off. These past few years have sent the whole organization on a free fall that is a ringing endorsement for relegation. Carolina is fucking dead. All of it. Their offense is as offensive as a man sick hiling David Tepper in public. I've taken shits that were more productive than this group. You thought you were in hell when Ron Rivera got canned? Oh, it only got so much worse. The San Francisco 49ers defense is a relentless swarm that terrorizes their opponents. But what happens when they get a taste of their own medicine? The Niners drew the dreaded Uno reverse card. Jimmy G reminded us all why they tried to replace him in the offseason. Oddly enough, it was to the Falcons. The rebuilding Falcons. They put on a defensive performance that Atlanta hasn't seen in probably decades. Thanks to key turnover, San Fran was publicly spanked, despite their heavily favored exterior. Even Mariota kept the mistakes to a minimum. In the end, you must embrace chaos. It's the only way to survive in this world. As shitty as the NFC South is this year, the Falcons have a legitimate shot of winning the division. I, for one, will cheer this outcome. If only for the meltdowns it'll cause. You thought things were bad in Carolina? Say goodbye to their best offensive weapon. Christian McCaffrey will no longer have to carry the burden of the entire offense. The Panthers were nice enough to ship him off to the opposite side of the country, so he wouldn't have to be reminded of the horrors he has witnessed. San Francisco is making their all-in push. They've learned from the Rams. Fuck them picks. Their second, third, and fourth this year, next year's fifth, useless. Acquiring McCaffrey will make them the deadliest offense in football. For about three quarters. Someone must have forgotten to tell the Niners that CMC is as reliable as Theranos' business plan. The ultimate high-risk, high-reward move. As for Carolina, it's tank time. 
pick up another hobby. It's gonna get ugly. The Niners have their newest weapon ready for deployment. Christian McCaffrey may not be at full strength, but he will be a worthy asset to resist the invading Chiefs forces. Now only if they weren't an overpowering foe. Sadly for San Fran, Kansas City brought out the heavy weapons. And it's not in peace either. Consider this a harsh lesson, Niners. If you want to be the best, you must play like the best. It's a simple equation. The Chiefs were the far superior team in many facets today. If you want to win, you need to get pressure on Mahomes. He was able to take out a lawn chair and relax with how much time he had to throw. You can't get into gunfights against Kansas City with Jimmy Jesus. He's a game manager, not a gunslinger. You ain't Buffalo, kids. They lasted for about three quarters before the killing blows were thrown. Too early to panic if you're San Fran. A lot of quality teams lose to the Chiefs. The next few weeks will be the true test. Remember the absolute laws of the NFL. Overreact to everything. When in doubt, it's a personal foul. And most importantly, San Francisco must defeat the Rams in regular season combat. LA is weak and ripe for the kill. The true power of Christian McCaffrey must be unleashed upon the world. CMC will achieve something rarely seen in the football realm. The Triple Crown. A rushing, receiving, and passing touchdown all in one game. Someone tell Taysom Football he's got some competition. With this convincing win, the Niners have made their statement to the world that they need to be taken seriously as contenders. And this was done without Debo Samuel. The upside of this offense is immense, and it was flashed against a supposed contender in the Rams. If everything's clicking, San Fran can be very dangerous, and they have time to hone their craft. Mr. Shanahan, it's time to prove the claims of you being the greatest offensive mind in football correct. <laughs> the struggle to secure California isn't really a hard one to decipher. In this world, whomever wins has the favor of the masses. The Chargers may be 5-3, but they're a fraudulent 5-3. They're getting lucky in spite of all their injuries and coaching follies. Against San Francisco, those shortcomings would come to roost. LA would try, and they do everything in their power to match a team trying to go all in, but it wouldn't be enough. The Bolts just don't have enough power to counter. Their Bay Area adversary is just too strong. Props for trying, at least. Justin Herbert was literally knocked out cold on the field of play, and he still kept fighting! I just wish they wouldn't turn him into a hollow shell of himself. Checkdowns and curl routes, ahoy! What an offense Lombardi devises! San Fran had trouble cracking the Charger defense for a bit, but they did enough to win in the end. Jimmy G just has to stand there looking pretty while the rest of the team does the work. Or watch as the Chargers fail to convert a 4th and 3 at their own 8-yard line. They had all three timeouts, but to be fair, their defense is shit. Eh, yeah, they were losing anyway. San Francisco needs to clean the bugs off its front grill after this one. They flew through Mexico like they were gun running for the cartel. The vermin that happened to be in their way were the Arizona Cardinals. You could say they didn't have Kyler, but he wouldn't have mattered whatsoever. Shanahan's offense was nigh unstoppable for most of the night. A healthy spread to all of their weapons to make sure everyone was fed properly. What we saw is what the Niners can be at full strength on both sides of the ball. Getting the engines revved against a pathetically irrelevant franchise like the Cards can only be a good sign. Down here, San Fran was in a completely different class. Arizona looked like they just gave up halfway through the game by trying to disconnect from the server. Cards, if only you could rage quit those extensions you gave the failures you call a head coach and GM this past offseason. There's playing yourself, and then there's being hoodwinked by men that have done nothing at this level. Or any level, to be honest. Can we just airlift J.J. Watt out of there like we did in Houston? Let him take DeAndre, too. The Saints are the Emmanuel Acho of NFL teams. They're just... there. Nobody knows why they keep getting attention from anyone, yet are thrust in our faces to be continually overmatched against their opponents. San Francisco is that next fortunate benefactor of playing New Orleans. The Niner defense has always been a threat to anything resembling opposition destroying any chance that the Bayou had of trying to score points. San Fran doesn't even have to do all that much with their arsenal of offensive weapons. Just clamp down on New Orleans until they stop moving. Give it a few minutes and they'll be dead. We'll even get some help in this process from this alleged illegal contact penalty on the Saints, and not knowing what the fuck a catch is supposed to be in this day and age. And a missed field goal, 
And a fumble in the red zone by Alvin Kamara. Let's just end this segment here. The last thing the world needs is more of a spotlight on the Yanks getting fucked. Fans have a point though. They got jumped hard by the Zebras. Master versus Apprentice. A matchup that always fascinates me. Will the teacher unleash new tricks? Or will the student find ways to usurp control over the school of football? In this contest, we've learned that the master didn't teach everything he learned to his student. He saves his best tactics for himself, just in case his protege is the arrogance to strike at him. It comes in the form of elite defense. Even in the face of one of the best offenses in the game, there will be no chance for them to secure traction. No ability to allow their weapons to thrive. Tua will look so off that his haters come out from the caves to flex on him in victory. It was a close affair for a huge chunk of the game, but San Fran would not be deterred. They would convincingly pull away in the end to get their fifth straight win. The all-in push continues with haste. Wait a second, you want to ask how Jimmy G's doing? We don't talk about that man around here. Garoppolo in trouble, and he is... We've been over this, Niners. Jimmy G has never been your quarterback this year. He has merely been a figment of your imagination. The man under center has been and always will be Brock Purdy. Mr. Irrelevant has become more relevant than ever to this team. He's a 16-year-old handed the keys to a Lamborghini. Baptism by fire in the furnace of Levi's Stadium. Wouldn't have it any other way. Sometimes the greatest memes are the ones that come out of nowhere. San Fran may have lost their lands. They may have lost their model moonlighting as a quarterback. But those tragedies have forced us to gaze upon the brass balls of their new man under center. He lets them hang so far down there he has to drag them on the ground. The modern answer to Nick Foles is the man who will lead the Niners to the promised land. Big Cock Brock. A legend in his own right by skillfully guiding San Francisco to a dominating win over a supposed contender in Tampa Bay. Mr. Irrelevant? Maybe for Todd Bowles. This game was over by the third quarter. The Bucks should have to apologize to all of America for forcing us to witness such teabagging. Brock Purdy slapped them around with his balls of steel all game long. It does come at a cost though. Debo Samuel. Oh, he'll be fine. It's only a day-to-day -day injury. And then days end up becoming weeks and weeks turn into the season. This is San Francisco. I'm not leaving anything to chance. The playoff push is reaching its final stages. Only one spot has been clinched by Philadelphia, but four weeks remain. Philadelphia obviously has number one seed, but the division is still up for grabs. Minnesota, after an ugly loss this past week, is still second seed. And the NFC North is technically secured as well. The torrid pace of the Niners has them starting to run away with the West in third place right now. But the NFC South is best not discussed. Tampa Bay only has it because the division is straight up awful. Meanwhile, Dallas is sitting pretty with 10 wins and first wild card. After that, it's a mosh pit. Washington and the Giants are currently tied at 7-5-1, and, and Seattle struggling to maintain form with an easy schedule. Detroit's creeping up though. And don't forget the rest of the garbage in the NFC South still has a chance. The picture will become clearer as time goes on. And as we all know, there's only one rule to follow. Don't get eliminated! Somewhere in Detroit, optimism swells to levels that an entire generation hasn't seen. In honor of this momentous occasion, the San Francisco 49ers will gladly bury the Seahawks alive in a landfill outside Tacoma. They didn't pay tribute to their masters, which means that the elite Niner defense will destroy any hope that this surprise contender had left. Yeah, they're still in the hunt, but after losing 4 of 5 in increasingly crushing fashion, this Cinderella story is turning into a pumpkin fast offering no resistance against the true hero of the night, Big Cock Brock. Another excellent performance which has San Fran's potent offense not skipping a beat. Despite the final score, it wasn't all that close. Their seventh straight win as they dance on the grave of the Twelves. For this is a night of celebration. The NFC West is theirs. We've had quite a lot of teams reach playoff land this week, didn't we? It doesn't mean we're anywhere close to settling how things will shake out. Philly still holds number one seed, and can clinch their division with either a win or Dallas loss. 
Minnesota and San Francisco both clinched their division since there's no elite team rivaling them in division. It's only positioning they're playing for. They won't have to worry about Tampa Bay. They are ass. And their division is even more ass. Please delete it from our existence. The winner of this shit pile will probably be hosting a playoff game against the Cowboys. And we will wish for death. The other two wildcard spots are currently held by the Giants and Commies, despite the G-Men winning last week. Seattle is falling hard while Detroit is rumbling back into the picture after being left for dead. Green Bay hangs on by a thread. And so does the rest of the NFC South. This is gonna be quite fucky, isn't it? Everyone left, you know what to say. I know it was a perfect opportunity for Washington to win with everyone else losing, but did anyone really expect them to this week? The Niners have been destroying all those that have the misfortune of crossing their path. They will offer no quarter. They will not grant leniency. There will only be complete annihilation. Teams don't roll off eight wins in a row by accident. And the scourge of the Bay Area showed us why here. There isn't much to decipher in this one. San Fran was just a significantly better team in nearly every aspect of play. In many ways, it felt effortless for the Niners. And this wasn't a cakewalk. The commies were riding decent form beforehand. It meant nothing since nobody could do anything to stop the onslaught. Taylor Heineke was on a short leash all game. He was promptly yanked to the sidelines after a series of fuck-ups. Because as we all know, hell hath no fury like Carson Wentz in garbage time. Easy win for the Niners today. Good work to keep pace with their rivals. With a few big losses this week, the NFL playoff picture has become a mosh pit, as has been written for time eternal. The NFC East is still the same scenario as before. Winning clinch for Philly, and that includes the number one seed. If Dallas loses once as well, they are doomed to play as a road team in the wild card. The NFC South is still the division that should not exist, and Tampa Bay can seal it away with a win against the Panthers. If Carolina wins, though, we continue down the chaos timeline. New Orleans is still technically alive, but will need a lot to happen to win the South. With wildcards, Dallas most likely will be headed to the NFC South winner. The Giants still sit comfy a game ahead of Washington for the second spot, with the Commies taking last seat for now. With Detroit and Seattle both losing last week, Green Bay can bullshit their way to a postseason berth with a few more things happening in their favor. But they need the Lions and Seahawks to keep losing. The Saints can also clinch a wildcard, but it's an extreme long shot. But it's a shot nonetheless. And if you have that, you can still chant the rule. Don't get San Francisco is one of the hottest teams in football. The Raiders keep losing in embarrassing fashion. What does this equal? A close contest? So is anyone gonna ask how Jarrett Stidham is doing this against one of the best defenses in football? This guy sucked in New England. How has he suddenly become the reincarnation of Ken Stabler in this offense? It's almost as if the spirit of Derek Carr is still with them from afar. And like that spirit, the fact that Stidham has to overcome an extremely porous defense is also in the cards. The Niners are a legit machine on the offensive side of the ball, but I don't think Las Vegas is keen on lying down to die. They have extremely slim playoff chances to maintain. Everyone that needed to lose has lost. The Raiders have gone out to a 10-point lead, but San Fran's pretty good at rubber banding back to tie. It's been pretty standard stuff from them, but the fighting and shootouts are fierce in the heart of Vegas. Touchdowns are being traded in kind as the fourth quarter continues to wind down. The game is now tied with San Francisco charging down the field. And they're in field goal range. Robbie Gold isn't gonna miss in a dome. Good snap, good hold, no good on the kick! Oh, wow! Missed it wide right! What the hell are we going to overtime? This is a mistake. Someone has to fix this. Adams did him. Wobbler for Adams, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Tashawn Gibson. Oh, he's gone. Gibson down the sideline. At least we have some sanity in this contest. With this pick, San Francisco wins and continues their torrid hot streak. As for the embarrassing Raiders, you're done. Now get out. The NFC East is also somehow still up for grabs, with Philadelphia being winning clinch for the third week in a row. Dallas wins and Philly loses next week, we all die. Every other division is locked up, but number one seed is still up for grabs. Philly should have it. But if they lose and San Fran wins, the Niners get it. If both of them lose and Dallas wins, we all die more. Then the seventh seed. Green Bay now controls their own destiny, God help us all. 
If Green Bay suffers another January home loss, Seattle would have to win to get it. If both the Packers and Seahawks lose, Detroit would slingshot back to the top. It's a lot to digest and hard to comprehend considering situations. But we must remember... To think the careers of J.J. Watt and A.J. Green would end like this. Rotting away in a retirement home of chaos. That has been the Arizona Cardinals for most of their franchise's history. And it continued against the team that ended up becoming what they so desperately <laughs> tried to be when they cloned Texas Tech. When you settle for David, I allow others to plow my wife, it's going to be a rough day. I don't care if rumors of Kingsbury and Kime being exposed <laughs> for their grift spread like wildfire. Those two should have never been extended in the first place. When you see San Francisco, it's a tale of haves and have-nots. It's a team of stability and offensive weapons. A team boasting an elite defense. A team that can plug in a seventh round rookie named Big Cock Brock and still run ramshot against anyone. It's why their moves have allowed them to win 10 straight, secure the second seed in the NFC, and look to be heavy favorites to make it to the Super Bowl. What did the Cardinals get? Jack and shit. As it's always been and always will be. And there you have one of the sloppiest NFL seasons we've seen in a long time. Depending on how you view things, it's either thanks to a revival of defense or incredibly terrible offense. I'm on the side of the latter, but when you see a collapse of anything resembling discipline and technique, it tends to be like that. But as the playoffs await, it's time to get sappy and sentimental. I consider sports ball as a project of sorts, and it feels weird when it's over. I want to thank you for joining me for another year of this madness, and I wish you all nothing but the best. It's been six seasons since I started this series. And I somehow haven't lost my damn mind yet. Perhaps these playoffs will do the trick. I'll see you all for the haters guy. It was an incredibly bold move at the time. The three and four with a massive quarterback conundrum, the Niners went all in. They needed a great weapon to complete their offense. And they got it with Christian McCaffrey. Did it work? I mean, if a 10 game winning streak to win the year says anything, I think it may have worked out in their favor. Just a hunch, but with their incredible offensive machine and one of the best defenses in football, with Nick Bosa and Fred Warner playing like Defensive Player of the Year candidates, they might be favorites to make it out of the grind for a Super Bowl. Do you know the ironic thing? Somehow losing bodies to injury made them stronger. The starter was supposed to be Trey Lance. He got knocked out in week three. The backup option was Jimmy G. He was taken down by the injury gods as well. Enter the unsung hero. A so-called irrelevant player who thrusts his brass balls into death-defying situations. Big Cock Brock. A legend without compare. And blessed with composure rivaling the most grizzled veteran. If he can limit his mistakes on the big stage, the Niners will go far. They have everything they need to make a deep run. The question is, will it materialize? Injuries have destroyed the Niners in three of the last five seasons. The ultimate curse, it happened again. San Francisco was decimated by forces beyond their control. Losing two QBs is hard enough, but the third time was finally the charm. <laughs> Big Cock Brock was cut down by a fucked elbow. Having no choice, they were forced to chuck the eternal journeyman Josh Johnson out to play the biggest game of his life. Before he was also knocked out of the game. You're forced to rely on a Brock that can't throw a football more than three yards, you're done. The Ron Trails use this meat for a cheesesteak stand. Maybe those will show as much unnecessary fight as the Niners did. Horrifically undisciplined. Even if the Eagles got a ton of breaks, they were winning this one easily regardless. It was a funeral. And Kyle Shanahan is Sisyphus. Continually pushing the ball to a star QB on top of the hill only for it to get hurt and fall off the other side. Such a terrible fate. Pray for his children.